Hey friends, can I call you friends? I feel like we're bringing this relationship to a whole new level. We should get a puppy together. In this video, we're gonna look at another type of parallax that I referred to in the first video of this series. Parallax on the web. In this video, we're gonna cover something that I called landing elements. This is when, as you scroll down the page, things move in and appear, and they land in the right spot on your layout. We've been working on this project, the clothing store website. Let's continue on and make some product thumbnails that move in and land one by one as you scroll down the page, like that. You can find the files I used to create this example on GitHub. There is a link in the description below. This is the third video in the Parallax series. Let's get into it. We're picking up exactly where we left off last week. And I have the project open up everything. I mean, if you're watching video to video, this is gonna be a really smooth, seamless transition. So we've got the parallaxing header right here. And if you, again, if you haven't seen how we built this, I went through every step of the code, check that video out, the previous video, we, we did it last week. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some store elements below the clothing store. So let's go back to our index file. And uh, we have the content here, and this is where we're going to be working in mostly. Under this paragraph here, I'm going to put another HR. That's a horizontal rule, and it'll just make a bar across there. Yeah. So we're going to create a grid of images that people can, uh, you know, see their see our, our clothing line. Remember, this is a clothing store, Blackbird Clothes. So let's create that grid. And this will be called, this section will call clothes picks or something. <laughs> As I explained in the video last week, we're using skeleton framework, so it does come with this little handy dandy little grid. So I'll, in, I'll enable the grid by typing out row, and then I just wanna name this row compared to any other row that you might see of an of a image um, dash row, because it's gonna be full of images. And this grid is gonna be comprised of um, a figure elements, and those figure elements are going to be called columns. This is these are uh, skeleton classes, columns, and we want we want there to be uh, four columns. Sorry, we want there to be three columns, and uh, skeleton is a, is a twelve column grid. So uh, you know four goes into twelve three times. So if we put columns four, meaning that this column is four units wide, we'll have three of them after we're done with that. So we need the image to show up, and the image is going to be uh, source equals, I have these models here, these images of beautiful people wearing beautiful clothes, and I got them from Zara.com, and don't tell them I stole their images for this, for this uh, example tutorial. So the source will be images, Model one dash JPEG, not dash JPEG, dot JPEG, silly pants. Okay, so there's our model right there. And we need, how many of these do we need? We need three of them across. Okay, and let's change up the model. So this will be number two and this will be number three. <clears throat> okay, there's a grid of three models, and we want to repeat this, these three rows. We want to repeat this row three times as well. Now, get you guys back into position here. Okay, now we have a grid of nine models. Cool. So let's jump into our layout.sass. Now here we have the base styles from before, we have the parallax styles that we did in the last video, and under that let's just, we'll just say uh, model grid, I guess. So looking at the model grid, I can see that we have like a nice, what is this, like 20, 20 pixels of padding, a little bit more even, pixels of padding between the images, and I would like that for the bottom. So I'll say, um, what did we call this thing again? Pick something, pick, close picks, <laughs> close picks. Close dash picks. And we wanna look at the figures inside, figure. And the figure will have a, 
and get that margin, uh, margin bottom. Let's add 20 pixels there. Okay, looks good. And we want to make these figure position relative. Now I think that we've got the grid set up nicely how we like it. I want to animate them in over time. Uh, let's see how we're going to do that. Let's jump into our functions. And now we're already listening to a window scroll event, which is good. Let's say uh, if, uh, let's, get, let's get with this right here. This is going to get weird. Uh, the window scroll. So that's the number that of the the our position of our window scroll, right? It's so like when we scroll down, it says how how uh, far have we scrolled. So if that number is bigger than this next number, so all right, pay attention right here. So we're going to look at <clears throat> an element in the DOM called close picks, close picks. Is it picks? Pick close close picks. Uh, look at the element in the DOM. Okay, so find that. And we'll see offset, and how far is it offset from the top? So right here, we're saying, look at, look at how far close picks is from the top of the, of the DOM. And let me, sh okay, we'll have an if, and I'll fire a, you know, I said I'm a nervous Nelly. If I do a console log, and the last one we did was, we just said hi. All right, let's look at my console. All right. Oh. Oh, it's offset, not off it. Off set. So when I'm looking at this uh this design, my console log of the message high is not firing until the top of this this div called close picks gets to the top of the window. As soon as it hits, it's going to start firing that high message. Okay, so now that we have a delayed, a delayed kind of like trigger, we can use that to say, okay, these things, these uh, images, these models are now in view. Let's animate them in. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these close picks. Those picks and the figure that are in them, right? And we'll say uh, each. So what this is going to do is going to iterate over each one. We have nine of them, and this is going to select each of them individually and start doing some functions. So this says anything that's inside of this happens to every one of these um, eaches. <laughs> every happens to every one of these figures in order, right? And because JavaScript is so fast, it'll seem to us like they just happen all at once. And that's fine, let me show you right now. So what I want to happen is to, to grab these close picks, right? The figure. And, and add a class of is showing. So let's go to our elements in our DOM. Header, no, section, content, article, close picks, and here's a, a few of the figures. So these have a class of column and four, and when I scroll to the right position, they should all get the, uh, the class of is showing. And there they go, is showing. Fantastic. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So now let's manipulate the CSS to kind of bring about this kind of animated in gesture. Hmm. Okay, so let's say when the figure has a class and is showing, we want what? We want the opacity is going to be one, meaning that when it's not is showing, we'll say opacity is zero, so we're going to fade it in in cut in in opacity, and also we're going to say transform translate. Uh, let's say translate x just so we can have just that one property zero pixels. So translate zero pixels means that we're going to start it somewhere else. 
we'll just say like negative 20 pixels. We'll move it in and fade it in when it, when it happens. Well, something's wrong here. We got the is showing. Well, what's the problem here? Let's see the function. Oh, I'm adding a class with a dot in front of it. Dummy. Okay, so let's try it again. Scroll down, and when the closed picks hit the top, these guys should fade in. Okay, that was actually quite abrupt. What I need to do is go. Uh, what I need to do is add trans transition. Everything's trans. Transition is going to be all um, zero point three seconds and ease in out. Cool. Now let's try it again. We'll scroll down. Aha, uh -huh. you see them? Uh, you see, you see, you see? They just fell in from the left. I wanted them to come in from the right. But they kind of do it all at once, right? They kind of all just move in at once as a grid. We can make it to where they move in one at a time. And we'll do that by saying, we'll use this iteration of each. And we'll use a set timeout function and uh, right here. And you gotta put an I in there to count each one. Okay, so set timeout, each one of these will happen um, and then, but we want to count them, right? So we'll say uh, EQ, which means like look at the index and find the right one, and we'll use that by I. Okay, so does it, <laughs> I did that a little fast. Does that make sense what's happening? We'll say don't, don't do anything until a certain time happens, and this is the number that we get from which one we're iterating on. And we'll say find the number of the one that we're on, after the set timeout, and uh, and add the class. Now, after the set timeout is done, we want to wait how long? 150 seconds um, times the iterator, which is i plus one, and then we need to close our brackets. Okay, so that should be basically they should all. They should all animate in after 150 milliseconds of each other. Did that happen? It didn't happen. What's happening here? Undefined 23. Oh, I need to define the I. That's coming from the each here. OK. Thowie. I put the I in the wrong spot. Not on this function, it's on this function which counts the iteration. The iteration goes to count each one that it should be selecting of the figures when the set timeout occurs. And the set timeout should be off, offset for each one at 150 milliseconds plus whatever number it's on. So like number two would be 300 milliseconds and that's how they come in one by one. So let's refresh this, scroll down a little bit, trigger that little thing. And there we are, coming in each one at a time. Scroll down. OK, now the big problem with this is that the animation does not get triggered until like the box is at the top of the screen. But look at this, all this white space. Why would anybody scroll all the way down there? There's no reason anybody would actually scroll down that way if there's no content there. So we want to trigger this animation like kind of like right around like there, you know, like kind of, kind of a lot earlier. So that's going to happen right here when we said offset top. Let's say offset top minus 500 and that will move it down. So like when it's 500 pixels from the top it'll start moving in 
And that's okay, but you can never like really be sure how tall somebody's browser is. So if they're using a really short browser like this, is 500 pixels going to be enough? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but let's be a little bit more smart about it. So instead of saying, like giving it a hard number, we'll say, why don't you find out how big the window is? And we'll do that by saying window height. And then take that and divide it by uh, Two. Well, actually, that'll be 100% of the wind height. To 1.5. So it'll be like the middle of the screen. So that should happen when the. Yeah. Mm, no, it's too much. 1.2. Good. Good. Okay. So the animation is not going to be triggered triggered until these guys are. One, or they're twenty percent into the space. Good, I like that. Now, no matter where uh, the the box is, like if you want to put some content above it or something, you know, like it'll happen when it's when the container of closed pics is twenty percent within the the viewport of the browser. I like it. I like it. Now this is just one way to create this effect and I like these kind of things because there's just so many creative ways to get it done. This video is made possible by the awesome people who support the show over at patreon.com. As patrons, they enjoy extra perks like a private podcast and the ability to vote on what videos we make next. Recently, a patron said this. If you're interested in joining Patreon, there's a link in the description below. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Oh, yeah, and keep on hacking. <laughs>